presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, Al in Homo Sasa. What's going on, brother? It's, isn't it wonderful? I went ahead and invested in your uh, Tiger Dollars, <laughs> and I went ahead and got the gold report <laughs> for a year, and, and also your, morning, your, your call letter and stuff like that. Like that and I got over a fifty percent return in one day, not counting uh, everything else. But I just want to thank you. Tom's not perfect, but he tells you how to put your stops in, and he keeps your losses small. You can take your small losses, but then all of a sudden you'll be like Babe Ruth, and you'll hit a home run. I mean, a big home run. Yeah. And put the money in your pocket. Okay, I mean, brother. I You're awesome, man. Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We have five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make a great week, folks. To begin a great relationship, know what you want. Know what the needs of your body are and what the needs of your mind are and what fits well with you. There are millions of men and women. Some of them will make a good match for you and others won't. The two of you only need to be like a ooh, key and lock. A match that works. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 76. NASDAQ's off 56. S&P's down 14. Gold contract uh, trading up uh, $2.70 at $17.06 an ounce. We have silver up 17 cents. $18.67 an ounce. Lights recruit up 5 bucks, $102.48. Notes and bonds. The 10-year note down six ticks, trading 118.14. The 30-year down 28 at 139.05 and King Dollar. King Dollar is down 733 ticks, trading at 107.330. Euro is 101. Yen is at 138. British pound is at 119 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Wanna know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? You have the SPY got up to 389. You tried trading at 383, couldn't hold price. This is, though, how you make, actually, longer-term bottoms, folks. So this is going to be really intriguing. My take is that we're going to get a heck of a bounce. The reason I'm saying that is that, you know, first off, we, you know, we kick this baby off. We, we get down hard on the 17th of June. We went straight down from the, you know, March 29th. We come back down again, tested, rejected. Come back down again, tested, rejected. Back down again, tested, rejected. That's saying the market wants higher price. Uh, this in particular today is really cool and it's really deviant. And, when, and the cool part about it, folks, is that this is what normally markets will do when they want to go higher. And the deviant part about it is it's very unusual when you can have Europe hold price and we don't have hold price. Europe is in a lot worse situation than we are, folks. Um, so I kind of like the setup. I, I actually do like the setup because of all those deviations that are inside it. Gold. Gold contract once again sold off as it got up to this uh, 1722 area. We're holding out up two bucks, 143,000 contracts. You're going to need a lot more contract volume than that. And it's going to take some uh, real strength to get back inside this 1730 area. Now, that being said... The dollar, and this is the one to keep your eye on, folks, okay? The real question is going to be, how much further will the dollar go lower? Or is this like a, a one-day wonder, you know what I mean, that it pulls back 727 ticks? We'll see. You know, the top of the strength, you know, the dollar, the dollar's had quite a bit of strength, period. But on the 5th of July, that's when the, the dollar went up uh, 1,700 ticks, okay? Well, the top of that is the 106.792 and this held there today. It, it actually didn't even get to that point. It, 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 it changed at 106.892. Uh, not that it went up a lot, but bottom line, it was, it was enough that the, the market itself was saying, okay, you're going to go back up on me because you go back up on me, man. I'm going to sell this market off as quick as I can. And you're going to see the correlation is direct. The low of the dollar was established at 11 o'clock this morning. It's been trying to go up since then. And each time that 
Each tick that that dollar goes higher, the bottom line, markets go lower. End of story. Some of the high volume equities out here. What do we have? You got Advanced Micro right now, up 58 cents. Apple's down 260. You get Nvidia up uh, three bucks. We have uh, Tesla up six dollars. Freeport Mac Moran's up a buck 84. Let's go look at the co copper contract because this copper contract, you talk about having, you know, some real volatility, man. This thing is like wild. So we're up seven and a half pennies out here today. It's been a straight line move down, you know, for the last month from 4.58 a pound. Uh, hit a low on Friday at 3.13 a pound. All right, we'll see if we can get some tra the traction here. Um, it's possible we can get some traction. This is the first day up. Let's get over to the oil contract. We take a look at the oil contract. Oil contract trading up 473. You're at 102.32. Seventy-one thousand contracts. So that's not a lot of contract volume. That's for sure. Get the price going with it. Now one o. Yeah, this is good. It actually, it's got it's getting by ice, man. One one o one fifty three is ice. So that's saying that this thing can you know get up there into the one eleven. It's going to be really hard. It's digging into that monster bar. That's when we. We had come down $14 in one day. That We came down from the 111 to the 97 area. We'll see how that's going to basically shake out. Let's go take a look at the uh, Amazon, the king dog out here, and see what that's doing after. You had the prime day. So Amazon start pushing with some volume Friday, giving up today 116.90. It went to 117.23. Oh, this is cool. Okay. So you're at 45 million shares versus 57 million. That's not that bad. We'll end up doing probably around 50 million out here today. And that's going to be enough to bust the swing point. We know we get over the swing point today. Hasn't held price, but that's going to be enough to get over it. And if we go to the SMHs, what you're going to see, folks, you've heard me say this many times. The SMHs drive you up, drive you down, drive you all over the place. Bottom line, the SMHs today... Got to a higher high. Now, the difference is the SMH is going to have volume in it. The swing point there is 4.47 million. We're at 3.4. This is still going to be building a little more cars. On Friday, we did uh, 3.8. Today, we're at 3.4. And we need, we need like 4. 4.4. No, 4. So you know, we're not going to get that in an hour. But we're going to probably get a 3.8 or something, which isn't bad. Because the first day... Uh, that only had a 2.7, but then it came down to 4.4. So in that context, you want something like a 4.2, somewhere around there. So it's eating some of that supply line that's out there. Dow, Dow Industrials right now trading down 100. We get the Nasdaq off 59. S&Ps are off uh, 17 and a half. Uh, we have gold out here at 1706, silver at 1865. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming back with our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes. Come right back. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? 
Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now are trading down 73. We get the Nasdaq off 49, S&P's off 14. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter on Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go to newsletters, you're going to see Mastering Probability right on the right-hand side. You just hit subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you can get it for one year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? You have everything to win, zero to lose. Steve has a huge amount of archives on there, really get you to understand how he looks at the market each and every day. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? <laughs> just uh, just trying to overcome my golf withdrawal after a uh, full weekend of the uh, British Open and nonstop uh, golf out there. I'm an early riser, so uh, and it started broadcasting on the uh, on the television stations at about 4 o'clock in the morning. So it was great to have something to do early in the morning out there. It was what, a great tournament. Was great it, tournament. Was it amazing or what that, you know that Cameron could yes, do what Cameron's he did. Great. If you didn't see this, folks, okay? And it well, was a shame because Rory missed so many of those by you know, like nothing for those birdies, right? It was like... Yes. I think the, 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 the interesting thing is if you played golf long enough, you know that one day you show up yeah. and it's like you... you and, and, and really at the British Open, it really is all about putting. I mean, each of these guys have got good long games and, yeah. and the ability to get the ball up there to hit a wedge into the uh, into the greens. So it really boils down to the uh, putting uh, in, in almost all the golf tournaments. The, the winner is usually number one or number two position out there. But if you played golf long enough, it's, it's you know, you can show up on a Saturday and it's like you can't miss a putt. Right. Even your putts that you think aren't going to go in, go in. And then you have those days where you just can't sink a darn thing. And I it's know. interesting to see that that also happens with the pros too. Right. You know, and, and, and Rory was uh, was a perfect example of that. Uh, Victor Hovland, he's, he's one of the guys that's a really rising star. Yeah, Great he's only 25, player. I guess. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. yeah. And it just, uh, you know, I really thought that he might be the one that would uh, pull it off. Right. But again, they're under a ton of pressure, you know, on a Sunday, even though they might say, you know, they can handle it. They're still under, uh, under pressure. So it's kind of fun to watch the pros when they're playing 
playing a difficult course like that, it kind of brings, you know, they, they even duff some shots out there. Oh, it was amazing uh, watching. And how about the guy that came in second? No one's even talking about him, Cameron's partner, the whole time. And then Cam all of a sudden Young. he comes yeah. in second, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, through on uh, at at after the uh, after the midpoint on Saturday, he was the one that uh, was in the lead, and and then on on, uh, on the, through Friday, and then on Saturday, he had one of his putting days where where nothing would go in wow. out there. So it's it's just really you know kind of interesting. And but that Cam Smith guy, I mean, he is uh, he he's he's just a. Uh, He's a great player. No you, doubt you know about what? It. You know what I was going to say, and I forgot the name of it. I was going to say, "Where's your mullet?" I was. I, mean, I <laughs> forgot what I, I forgot what it was called when I was coming on because that's why. Yeah. Because folks, you got to see this. I mean, when you think of golf. I, I could even think of golf 20 years ago. I remember when, whether it was John Daly or Sergio Garcia, they come on with the bright clothes and all that. When you yeah. first see this guy, he's got a huge mullet. And hey, guess what? doesn't matter what you look like, folks. It matters whether you win or lose. <laughs> that's, it. that's for sure. That's for sure. I'll, I'll be disappointed if he uh, if he ends up, Cam Smith, if he ends up going over to the live tour out there. Um, you know, So hopefully, he's, hopefully he stays. I know there's some rumors about that being one possibility. But hopefully he stays on the uh, PGA yeah. Tour. You know, and so, so hey, this chart here that uh, okay. you and I have looked at this uh, numerous times out here for those folks that are just listening in. This is a midterm seasonal chart pattern for the S and P 500, and this takes a look at the uh, last uh, 72 years. The red uh, vertical line that you see out there represents where we're at today, and in essence, the the way that I would take a look at this chart, it really tells me that if we follow along this pattern, that we're really in a consolidating type of uh, pattern that could easily last through the early part of October out here. So that's what this chart uh, tells us. If we go ahead and expand out and take a look at the bottom of this chart here, it also shows us what the average return by day is from a percentage standpoint, as well as what the average return for this time period for these uh, for the midterm uh, uh, election years by month out there. So if we if we blow that up and take a look at it, and this again, this is the S&P 500, seasonally, February was supposed to be an up month. And uh, May was uh, supposed to be a, a down month. So those are only two months that didn't tie out to be exact. So four out of the six seem to be following along the uh, path out here. If we go take a look at the NDX 100, though, uh, and as you pointed out, the, you, you said the SMHs can drive the market higher, drive the market lower. We put the NDX 100 in that same category out here. And this is the scary thing. That red vertical line is – this, so let's this take a look at the NDX 100 over the last 36 years. And again, that red line identifies where we're at right now. And this suggests that we should see a market that moves lower into the uh, uh, end of July, early part of August, before we get any kind of a significant rally out there. So that's what this average pattern shows us. Like the S&P 500, February was supposed to generate a positive, take a look over here on the left-hand side, was supposed to produce a, a positive month that didn't, it was slightly negative. But otherwise, everything else here is uh, really tracking right online and we can see that July uh, July and August are supposed to be down months as uh, well. Obviously, right now we're off to a month the upside. Yes, I agree with you. We see a bottom out there. But again, just take a look at the seasonal pattern. It does say that we need to really uh, focus on the, uh, on, in my opinion, we need to focus on the NQ. And if we take a look at what it did today, so this is a picture from maybe about a half an hour ago. Yes. What Price was able to do, this rally, Tom, took us right up into the bottom of its uh, profile at 12,197. Right. It got, it was maybe within about 10 points of that, and then it backed off. I believe it was some of the news on Apple that had us back off there. But, uh, um, it, it, it hit resistance. And when I take a look at a seasonal chart, you know, I'm like, huh, what, what, what's going on? I listen, here? every time it's hitting it, I know what you're saying, man. Even though I listened to your show today, I know, right? Yeah. There's no doubt. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what this could potentially could bring into play here, because if you can't bust them to the upside, outside, yeah. upside you know, you try to bust them to the downside. As you pointed out, you know, towards the end of last week, we couldn't bust them to the downside. So it's going to try to bust them to the upside. Well, where is that upside? Where is that resistance? Well, from a profile standpoint, it's at that 12, 190. Area. So if we do see a, a market that moves lower, um, then we're looking at maybe about the 11, uh, 11, 630 area, which is these rising trend lines. So those would be the next targets if we do see a pullback. So 
Um, they got that kind of screwed up here. So the number one weighted instrument in the NDX-100, everybody knows, is Apple. And again, this was a snapshot from maybe about a half an hour ago. And what Apple might be doing today is completing a, a sell the D point or a Gartley sell pattern. And that would be a, on the assumption that it goes ahead and produces a bearish and a bearish reversal candle. Right now, it was a bearish engulfing candle. Uh, and it needs to do that by 4 o'clock today. The interesting thing here, though, is even though we've got this potential sell the D point or Gartley sell pattern, what price has also done is pulled back and tested the top of its daily profile, which is 147.55. So that is a key level of support. I don't know where it's trading right now, Tom. 147.60. As long as, is it, as, long yeah. as price holds 147.55, even with the topping signal, I consider that to be a neutral sign. But if price does close below 147.55, it suggests a further uh, pullback out here. And that further pullback could easily be about 143 or so. So uh, we're just in a market that we could see a lot of this. It's a great day trader's market. I don't know that it's a great investor's market. No, back and either. forth. No doubt. Yeah, and listen, absolutely. folks, real easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You'll see going to newsletters. You hit Mastering Probability in the right-hand side. You are off to the races. Steve, Thanks, have a Tom. great one. Safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you. Come Thank on. you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is off 135. Nasdaq's off 73. S&Ps are off 23. Let's go take a look at a couple copper stocks and FCX is copper and gold. So Freeport Mac Moran, to take a look at it here. Right now, you're trading at 27.52. The low for the year is 24.80. The high is 51. Pays a 2% dividend. Let's see what we got here. So this is, we're down from 51. So the stock's cut in half in three months, which is pretty amazing. Okay, so. Come back into a breakout area, 2642. 
So what you have here at Freeport McMoran is this. You know, when you come back into a breakout area, the breakout area, folks, at, at a weekly basis at 155 million shares. You can see what happened on Friday. We did 135. So it is, bottom line, 15 million shares lighter, um, approximately, what, 7%, 7 7%, 7 something like that. Um, you got some juice in here today. Now, let me put this back on a daily. If you're walking into this, is that, yeah, you can put the stop under where you're at now, you know, put the stop under 2480. And your first leg, I suspect what we have is this. If you're in the metals market at all, I think what we're going to see here is that you're going to have a bounce to ice. Okay, so ice in Freeport MacMoran is laid out at 3343. That's how this is laid out. Um, so I said that's where you're going to start getting some flack on the way up. That's where it gap down from. Uh, but that very well can go to ice. Now the thing, this is what the cool thing is about ice right now. Because these stocks have got smoked so bad, folks, okay, a dead cat bounce can get you to ice. What would change that, meaning what would change that it goes from a dead cat bounce to actually a market that wants to go higher is an expansion of volume on the way up. Now, let's go over to Southern Copper. So, Southern Copper is the largest copper company in the world. This also went south the, when, of course, price of copper was going down. The low is $44. That was established last week. The high is $79. Uh, next time they come out with the numbers is the 26th. Now, this, this one here, check this out. This pays a 10.4% dividend at this price. And revenue-wise, this is what they're looking for. Let's see what they're looking for. They're looking for $2.7 billion and bringing a dollar to the bottom line. So if we take a look at this equity, put this back first three years, did the same thing. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so your breakout here, here was 47.64. We had 4.9 million shares. This came in with 7.6. See, this one's a little more dangerous. Because we came down with heavy volume, man. Okay, so now, that being said, let's go into the dailies on Southern Copper. Now, this is the same type of setup, and you're going to see all the metals have this. Uh, ICE on the Southern Copper is set up at uh, 5403, and ICE would be the same as resistance on the way back up. That's, that's how you can look at ICE. It, it actually breaks on the way down and on the way back up. So, yeah, it can get to there. I mean, you know, in, in both cases, uh, HG, let's go over to the co Copper contract. What you're going to see is that, you know, the bottom line is that this contract is at, got, got smoked. I mean, just from two months ago, it went from 457. This is the first day we get any traction in it. So, you know, we'll see if, in fact, it can, it can get some more traction. Um, you know, the, the way that it's trading right now, it looks to me, I would say, that it has to build cause first um, in order to get to higher price. And the, the, build, the building cause aspect, folks, is just a back and forth, back and forth. But when it is going back and forth, you're going to see higher volume. If you're building cars on the way up, as you're consolidating going sideways, you will still see more volume on the way up than the way down if it's building cars on the way up. If it's building cars on the way down, because it's already been coming down, you're going to see each and every time at the bottom of the consolidation, the volume expands versus the volume on the way back up. That's kind of how it shakes out. So um, it's going to be it's going to be a close call. That's the, that's the bottom line. The dollar should give the market some breathing room for sure. The copper contract, you know, is contingent on China. And I think China's in a tough situation right now, man. That's the bottom line. Um, you know, Z could go as far as he wanted to go, um, you know, because he's the dictator. Uh, but that is really starting to have different impl implications um, into basically their standard of living. That's, that's what it comes down to. Uh, so we'll see how that whole thing's going to shake out. If you didn't see it over the weekend, uh, what China is going to start doing now. So picture, first you had the, uh, the large um, developers in China going south, okay? Uh, last week what happened, and they tried to shut this down as fast as they could, is that you had, so picture that um, we all basically uh, have pre-bought a, a unit. 
and one of these large buildings over in China. Well, what ends up happening is that all these folks, even though these developers over there are going to rack it out anyway, but this is how they get, this is, this is legally what they can do. They not only want the mortgage payment up front on a continual basis, and the unit's not even you know, developed yet. Um, so what the folks start doing, and this, this went very quickly across the country, is that they start stopped paying their mortgages uh, because the place is not built. Well, China shut that down pretty quick on social media, but then came out this morning saying that they're thinking about the aspect that they will suspend mortgages and penalties on the mortgages if the place isn't built. So you can see, you know, when you have a society like that, you don't know what spark can really uh, get some things going where um, they get problems. And, and the reason I bring that up is right from copper, because the bottom line is that if things start falling apart, copper not, would be one of the first ones. You know, you know and in the, in the particular case of number of bills they have, well, I can see that because the bottom line is that, you know, folks stop paying mortgages. The central government is going to have to prop up these banks somehow. And I suspect they will. I mean, that, that's the bottom line, you know. And we'll see how the rest of it shakes out. Let's get over and take a look at the EME Mini here. Uh, it's getting more downward pressure as we come into the close out here. So we take a look at this. Okay, so right here. Is that an ABC down? I guess it is. Once, oh, excuse me, folks. So right there, that bar had 39,000 contracts. That's 40,000. It's a close call. But if it's an ABC down, it's uh, 899. So let's say 3,900. Um, so is that 58? 42 A to B would get you 3825. Oh, interesting, it's finishing up. Well, that's good news. <laughs> uh, it's the, the, if, if this was a confirmed ABC down, it, t it was the next bar that took it out. But if that's what it is, it's approximately 38.22 or 38.32 right now. Yeah. So NDX, we go let's take a look at the three Qs, how the three Qs are setting up right now. They got up to the high of uh, 2.96, gave up seven points. Yeah, this is coming down to probably finish that gap from two days ago. This is, you know, you've heard this many times. This is, if I'm right in this context that we're going to get a really good bounce, this is the backing and filling of getting a bounce. See where this baby shakes out. Dow down 243, NASDAQ off 104, S&P's down 36. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar 
dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is down 242. You get the NASDAQ off 105. s and is down 36. And, you know, we were talking about the, you have the trial that's going on about the spoofing in the gold market, folks, okay? And it, the thing that's amazing to me is that not only this has been going on so long, and you know the gold market is a very small market, as is the silver market, and when you just you know bottom line see that it was so institutionalized, meaning the spoofing, uh, it's going to be wild to see exactly how this jury comes out in this trial. So you had a bear, bear so you had a Bear Stearns. Well, it's J P Morgan bought Bear Stearns. Okay, so the story is about. At Bear Stearns, before the bank was acquired by J.P. Morgan Chase in 2008, manipulating, listen to this, manipulating gold future markets with bogus spoof orders was common practice, especially for its top trader, Greg Smith, a former colleague told jurors uh, in Chicago. It was pretty widespread. This is a quote now. It was pretty widespread on the precious metal trading desk, says Corey Flam, a gold and silver trader who was later fired for spoofing and reached a criminal plea agreement to cooperate with prosecutors. It was done out in the open, Flume said Monday. No, no one ever said boo about doing it. No one ever said it was legal or illegal. It was a common practice. Smith, who became J.P. Morgan's top gold trader after the merger, is on trial with two others on the desk. Jeffrey Rufo, a salesman who handled orders by the bank's biggest hedge fund clients, and Michael Nowak, the longtime head of the J.P. Morgan First Metal Business. They're accused of operating a criminal enterprise by manipulating prices from 2008 to 2016. Flume described how Smith used spoof trades, huge orders that are quickly canceled before they can be executed several times a week to push precious metal prices up or down so he can make trades for the bank and his clients more profitable. Flume, who joined Bear Stearns in 2006 and sat next to Smith in their office, said he learned to spoof on the bank's precious metal desk and wasn't aware that the practice was illegal until 2011. It was something I observed, Flume said, nobody from the managing director of the desk to the supervisor to people in compliance ever came out and said anything about it. The former trader said the precious metals desk routinely spoofed because the technique usually worked which was profitable for the bank and kept clients happy by ensuring better prices on their orders. Flume said he could tell when Smith was spoofing the market because he'd hear Smith's excessive clicking as he rapidly canceled orders seconds within seconds of placing them. 
That contrasted in the normal trading that was more slow and methodical. Flume said he left Bear Stearns in 2008 to take a similar precious metal job at the Bank of Nova Scotia, where he worked until he was fired for spoofing in 2016. Flume pleaded guilty in a, to attempted price manipulation in 2019 and agreed to cooperate. He's, uh, this is the second gold trader to testify on behalf of the government for a trial that began uh, July 8th. So we'll see how this whole thing's going to shake out, man. It's, it's, you know what this is like, folks. So, so picture this. Spoofing was made illegal uh, in 2006 or 2007. It should have been made illegal a long time before that. But it absolutely is illegal. And anyone, let me tell you something, anyone that's in the business knows it was illegal. That, that's, you know, him saying to, he doesn't understand that 2011, 2012 was illegal. That's not real. What is real, I would say, is that his compliance and the bank could care less about it because we know uh, time and time and time again, the bottom line, no matter how much money they come up with, guess what? It's nickels compared to the amount that they, the banks make. That, that's what it comes down to, you know. So I'm not quite sure what, you know, this is different this time. Well, it's only, it's only different this time because a couple heads are going to roll. You're not going to have the corporation roll, you know. So... We'll, we'll see with, and I suspect, let me tell you something, the way that gold still trades, <laughs> someone's always got their hand on that scale, man. That, that's the bottom line. And, we'll, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how the whole thing shakes out. But bottom line, uh, you can see the, the aspect is that when, they, when they're doing big odds, I, I, it would seem like that, how could you move that market so quickly? In the futures market, folks, it's very easy to do because the, the gold market itself is a small market. Any major bank, in this case, you're talking about J.P. Morgan, okay? They can, they can move that thing anywhere they want if they want nothing to do with regulations. That's just how it comes down, man. That's, that's the bottom line. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at some of the other higher volume equities. Well, here, let's go take a look at... Uh, you got headlines out there saying, uh, Tilray, that the you have traders closing shot positions. And this is so intriguing to me when, you know, you, you see these headlines. It's like, okay, if anyone shot stocks that are 2 or $3, I mean, that doesn't even make any sense. And you ha so you have these stocks moving a little, um, and they're moving a little. The headline news is that they're moving because the fact of the matter is that Congress is mulling action. Bottom line, folks, all you have to do is Congress is not going to pass anything. Yeah, because, well, Congress might actually. Congress might. The Senate is not going to because they need 60 votes if they got all the Democrats and they don't even have all the Democrats. There's two Democrats that want to keep uh, the pot business uh, just as bad as heroin or cocaine, which is just... <laughs> Picture this. Human beings, we are not too smart, man. I mean, just that whole concept. Think about that concept for a second. This is 2022, and, and they're saying that marijuana, which is legal just about everywhere in the whole country medically, right, is as bad as cocaine and heroin. Cocaine and heroin will kill you, like in a second, right? It's like crazy. And, and of course, booze is legal, right? Hard to figure out, man. You know, bottom line is that my take is that this is not going anywhere and these pot stocks don't look like they're going to go anywhere either. And, you know, the bottom line, it's a commodity. You know, in the state of Florida, you can't grow it. The state of Massachusetts, you can grow it. So it's like almost like, okay, if you're in a state that you can grow it, why do you have to go buy it? It's not like making booze. Making booze would seem to me like, like a lot harder. Like, right? That's what it seems like, you know. The states that you can grow it in, why wouldn't you grow it? We probably have some fun having a green thumb, right? <laughs> Let's go take a look at exactly where we're going to stake out here volume wise. So, inside the indices, yeah, it's going to be light volume. But see, what we did do is we're trying to get to a higher high with light volume. But my, I think this is a back and filling, man. That's, that's how I do. And a, a lot of it has to do with how we came down to the lows, but also how Europe held price, folks, okay? You don't see. Europe holding price, um, us getting higher, getting jammed lower, and not holding price, that, you know, which we did today. That's the bottom line, which we absolutely did. You know, so you can see this would be pretty cool, actually. The SPY is at 381. 
I'd love to see it go to 379.09, because what that would be, you know, that'd be a fill of the gap. That's how this thing is shaking out right now. And maybe that's exactly what the market wants to do. So, so picture this. Picture tomorrow morning, we come down, we hit into that level, you gotta, because you gotta have a rejection at lower price. You need 89 million shares there. We're not gonna get 89 million shares as we go into that price point. So this is probably setting up for a nice little buy tomorrow morning. Dow, Dow Industrials right now, accelerating uh, yet down to 263, the NASDAQ's up 112, S&P's are up uh, 38. Come right back, folks. around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now are down 230. Get the NASDAQ off uh, 99. S&Ps are off uh, 34. Let's go inside the Dow Industrials and see the strength versus the weakness point-wise out here today. And this is what you had. Putting the positive points in the Dow, even though we're negative, was Goldman Sachs. That's plus 42. Goldman Sachs come out with numbers, folks, and their trade has actually saved their day for Goldman Sachs. Uh, they had big trade uh, income. And, uh, you know, they... Bottom line, it saved the butt. Uh, Chevron. Chevron's putting 13 positive points. Uh, Dow is putting five. Taken away from it. Uh, United Health minus 64. Amgen 
minus 32, Johnson & Johnson minus 26, and Apple minus 20. Inside the NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX 100, you got Airbnb up 3%, JD.com's up 2.3, Booking.com up 2.7, and Vidya up 2.2. Taken away from it. Seijin down 5.5%. You got uh, Fortnite, Fortnite down 3.5%. Regeneron down 3.4%. DocuSign off 2.9%. Uh, so we got we get a, we get a market out here. That's the bottom line. And as I said a little bit earlier, I actually like how this setup is coming down. The, the key to always remember is that the market is about energy. It's energy on the way up, energy on the way down. And, and we're just talking about the aspect of the market is hitting resistance every single time that it goes up there. But guess what? It doesn't want to go low either. You know? So we'll see how this, that's what the building cause is going back and forth, back and forth. And I suspect what we're going to see, you're going to, you're going to bust through the swing point. And when that swing point busts, you're going to see quite a bit of buying. The swing point I'm talking about, folks, on the cash S&P is the swing point of uh, 39.45. And right now, we you know, this morning we made it to 38, uh, I mean, 39.02. Um, you know, tricky, no doubt. No doubn't. Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God, there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 o'clock in the morning. Great show, folks. Oh, get him, folks. <laughs>